Nation from OAKLA to LV. I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Today's show, I'm dishing out training camp grades after the first week of padded practice. And today's show is made possible by my good friends, Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash Raiders where you can save 20% off and get free shipping. So if you're trying to get an A+, plus, or if she's trying to get the D, <laughs> we got you covered. If you are looking for some free daily Raider videos, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you're a diehard fan, if you bleed silver and black, and who doesn't like a good uh, free vid, go ahead down there, click that big red button that says subscribe. The first player that I'm going to talk about here, Marcus Mariota. Sorry, dude, you're getting a D. He did look, er, did look okay early on in camp, but as soon as the pads got thrown on, he has really been struggling. And we know how difficult it is to learn Gruden's system, learn his offense. Derek Carr has spoke about it multiple times. You can see that he's struggling to learn the system, plus the chemistry with the receivers, it's just simply not there. So here's a quote from Vic DeFour, who has been covering the Raiders pretty closely. Mariota looks a little stiff throwing the ball. Gruden mentioned how he was back from an elbow injury, but Mariota doesn't look that comfortable and isn't getting the ball out very smoothly. He has had some nice runs that got Gruden hyped up, but the short throws aren't pretty, while the longer throws have been hit and miss. Not great. He also goes to mention this, because I know you guys are going to ask me about Derek Carr. Carr, meanwhile, always looks good in training camp and has been sharp. I know we're only five days of helmet of practice in, but I don't see any indication that Mariota would be pushing Carr anytime soon. Obviously, as soon as the Raiders went out and signed Mariota to that deal, two years, 17.6, everyone was like, wait a minute, Mario's going to push him. Sorry, it looks like it's Derek Carr's job, and it's going to be Derek Carr's job from here on out. Next player here, we are going to talk a lot about the rookies, and there's been a lot of hype around Lynn Bowden Jr. I'm giving him a C grade, and for me, a C is an average grade. So they want him to be in this Taysom Hill type of role. The reason why I am giving him a C, and again, just an average grade so far, the talent is obviously there, and you can see the talent. When he's got the ball in his hands, it's electric. What scares me, though, and what really could limit his ability of getting on the football field is his pass protection. They want to use him as a running back. They want to use him at a shotgun. If the team is un, uh, doesn't trust his ability to be able to protect the quarterback, that really could limit his ability to get on the football field. Next player up here is Henry Ruggs III, B-plus grade. And I'll be honest, I'm going to be a little bit more tough on Ruggs because I have a high expectation for him. The speed, it's there, and it's been getting a ton of attention. Darren Waller said when he runs, it's like a cockroach that just turned the lights on. He just scoots around. It looks effortless. The team is going to use him in all different sides of the field. They're going to use him out of the slot. He's mainly going to play out of the Z. I know there's been some rumors around that that we've covered. Henry Ruggs, the upside is there. It is clearly there. But the reason why I gave him a B plus is because I just couldn't give him a higher grade than the next receiver who, the hype, it's been chugging along the hype train for Brian Edwards, man. It is here, and he gets an A-plus from me. You can't go on the internet, and I challenge you to do so. Look up Raiders and the name Brian Edwards. I guarantee you this. Four chucky heads, it's coming up. So Mike Mayock originally, you know, apparently had a first-round grade on him before the pre-combine injury. Derek Carr has come out and said that he reminds me of Devontae Adams. And for me, this reminds me a lot of, do you remember last year, all the hype around Darren Waller when they were like, yo, this guy's different. He's a different breed. That's what I'm seeing this year with Brian Edwards. He's got the size, he's got the speed, and he's only 21 years old. Plus the production that he put up at South Carolina. Yeah, Brian Edwards, you got my attention. So, out of the two rookie receivers, who are you more excited to watch? Henry Ruggs, type HR. Brian Edwards, type BE. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So for every single person that watches this on YouTube, I want you to scroll on down during the YouTube ad break and let me know who you're more excited to watch. Type HR for Ruggs or BE for Brian Edwards. Sam Young. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm giving Sam Young an A. And what world are we living in where he gets one? But it is this one. And major, major props to this dude who is taking full advantage of the fact that Trent Brown I couldn't really give him a grade because he hasn't shown up. Maybe Trent Brown deserves an F. Gruden absolutely loves him, and he's been a uh, big Gruden grinder, if you will. When asked to describe Sam Young, Gruden said 
He's like a salty veteran. Not sure what that means exactly, but the hype is definitely, definitely there around Sam Young. Give you an A-plus grade here for this perfect package and 20% off plus free shipping. The Lawnmower 3.0 comes in there. Ball toner, ball deodorant, the most comfortable underwear you will ever own. Bottom line is this. I'm giving Manscaped an A-plus. And if you're trying to get your D out there so everyone can see it, guess what? The best way to do it is by going to manscaped.com slash Raiders, 20% off, free shipping, the free boxers in the bag. That comes also in there with the perfect package. It's called perfect package for a reason because it's going to make your package absolutely perfect. The link is in the comments and it's in the description. Take advantage of this offer. Let's now go to the D, shall we? Uh, Cleland Furl, I'm giving him an A grade. And I, I do think that this uh, hype train around Furl is here for a reason because he did struggle as a rookie. Yes, I'm excited that he added weight. Yes, I'm excited that apparently he's in the best shape of his life. But I do think Raiders media has been doing a very good job giving Furl confidence in. Max Crosby earlier in the week said, I think he just lost a lot of his confidence last year. But seeing Paul Gunther say some positive things about him, you can see the quote up here, the fact that he's in tremendous shape, the fact that he is quicker. For me, what I'm excited to see is if they do plan to use him as an edge rusher and defensive tackle, how does that look on Sundays, Mondays, and, well, yeah, sometimes Thursdays as well. Next player, Arden Key, B-plus grade. And if I was just going off of what I hear, it would probably be an A++. The amount of uh, reports have come out that he's very impressive, that he looks like the best defender in the team. All I'm saying is this. This is my third year covering the team. Pump the brakes. He, does Key have talent? Yes. His main issue has been being able to put it together on the field and whether or not he's been a total fit. When Arden Key was asked, who are you really trying to get under the skin of this year? He didn't say Tom Brady. Well, actually said, I'm not trying to get underneath Tom Brady's skin. I'm trying to get under John Gruden's skin because if I can get underneath that guy's skin, that means I'm doing the right things. Arden, put it together on the field. You got the talent. I just need to see it ultimately come through. So let me know. We're doing grades here, A, B, C, D, or F. Which Raiders player has impressed you the most at camp? Is it somebody on offense? Is it, you know, maybe somebody on defense? Let me know who has impressed you the most at camp. The player that has impressed me the most, it's got to be Malik Collins. When the Raiders went out and signed Collins, I was like, it's a good move. You can go back and look at my free agency grades. I never thought I'd be given an A+. Gunther has really, really been excited about him, and he said that he reminds him of Geno Atkins, that he's been the best offseason addition. Gruden thinks that he's going to be the key to the defense, and there was a report that came out on Thursday that he was able to drop 22, wait, math, 23 pounds. He went from 325 to 302, and is it exciting to see that Collins is in good shape? Yes, when you watch the film, when you watch the tape, this during training camp that they're putting out, it's impressive. He's always been able to get after the quarterback. For me, does Malik Collins, for him to really take that next step, he needs to improve a little bit more out of the rushing game as well. But luckily for him, they got Coach Rod Marinelli in. I'm also going to put Rod Marinelli in my grades, and I'm giving him an A. He has truly been able to inspire a, a defense that you guys watch the games, have really struggled getting after the quarterback. 2018, only 13 sacks, only 32 sacks last year. If Rod Marinelli can get the most out of these young players, look out. But I am giving him an A. So out of Cleveland Furl, Arden Key, and Malik Collins, out of those three players that you see on screen, who do you think is going to have the most sacks in 2020? If you think it's going to be Clee, I want you to type CF. If you think it's going to be Arden Key, I want you to type AK. If you think it's going to be Malik Collins, type MC. If you want to go above and beyond, let me know how many sacks you think each of those players is going to have. Let's go to the linebacker position now because there's been a lot of talk around the linebacking position. I had Nicholas Morrow last week as a loser. Maybe he watched my video. Maybe he flipped me the bird. But this entire week of pad of practice, he has stepped up. So two impressive interceptions. One was, I guess, a little bit of an overthrow against Marcus Mariota. But I think he saw the fact that ESPN projected him to cut him. I projected the team to cut him. If he keeps playing the way that he is, he's going to make that final 53-man roster. Let's now go to the man who's been stealing the show on defense, UDFA out of UNLV, Javen White. Versatile player. You can see it. And Eric Harris came out and said on Thursday, 
He has a lot of potential. The talent is there. He's impressing Gunther. He's impressing Gruden. He's impressing other players like Matt Crosby. Javen White, man, I'm telling you what, he needs to be on your radar. The Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped, it should be on your radar because it is the best male grooming tool out there. There is absolutely no tug when you use it. It's safe in the shower. The battery life is phenomenal. It fits absolutely great in your hand. And the one thing that I don't talk about nearly enough, when you shave down there, it's hard to see. It's like a black hole, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of see at the very, very tip of that lawnmower 3.0, there's a light. It's just kind of just helping you out see so you can get the best shave possible. Go to manscaped.com slash Raiders, 20% off, free shipping. I use it every day. I'm telling you right now, it's a product y'all are going to absolutely love. And we're going back to the D here. Tanner Muse, just he's been struggling. And when he played safety at Clemson, the Raiders really wanted to help try to convert him to pick up this defense. The issue for him is he's been put in the backlight by Javen White, who has actually been doing very well. And Tanner's mom followed me on Twitter about a few days ago, so she's probably going to see this. She's probably going to yell at me. It's all good. I am maybe just trying to motivate Tanner to get the best out of his ability. Um, but this show is about the interaction from the nation, and I do want to know, who do you think the better player is? If you think it's Tanner Muse, type TM. If you think it's Javen White, type JW. If you're really enjoying the show, hit that subscribe button. Let's go to the last player here that I'm going to be grading. It's Damon Arnett, and he's been working mainly with the first team defense. If you would have asked me who would have been Arnett or Prince of Mukamara a few weeks ago, I would have said Prince, but he has been outplaying Prince from what it looks like. He had a very impressive interception while covering Henry Ruggs. I know everyone, and especially Twitter, flipped out about that. And speaking of Twitter, he is getting the attention of a former wide receiver who has changed his name a bunch, but Chad Johnson basically uh, went to Twitter and said, whoever's wearing number 20, his technique is spot on. You can say a lot of things that you want about Chad Johnson. He is a, he's the verbal diva, if you will, from 10 years ago. He's always been all about technique, so the fact that he recognizes it, I think that's a good thing. It's one of the reasons why I did ultimately give Damon Arnett an A- minus grade. If you like the video, if you think it deserves an A+, hey, go ahead, give it a like. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this, I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching, and go Raiders.